Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Randy Orton returns to SmackDown Live. I also think he's a babyface now. And a wild Tony Chimmel appears. I am Luke Owen. Leave a comment down below I can reply to. And vote in the poll above my head to let me know what you thought of the show. Where you could choose from SmackDown, SmackTastic, SmackBang in the middle, SmackDowner, and a smack in the face. This is the 22nd of January 2019 edition of SmackDown Live in about four minutes. The show opened with the man Becky Lynch cutting a promo on Asuka about beating her for the title at Royal Rumble this Sunday, bringing out the champ to shout at Becky off mic in Japanese, which was awesome. And then this brought out Charlotte Flair to tell everyone that she is going to win the Rumble. This was a really solid promo by Flair, pointing out that she has four choices after she wins the match. She could face Sasha Banks, who she's beaten time and time again, Ronda Rousey, who she left laying at Survivor Series, Asuka, who she beat last year at WrestleMania, or Becky Lynch, who she knows she can beat. Asuka then attacked Becky and the two brawled around ringside, which initially saw Lynch leave Asuka laying, but the brawl continued backstage. Later in the show, Flair also told Carmella that she would win the Rumble despite Mella's number 30 advantage. While this was all good, it is a shame that SmackDown has only pushed one woman in the division to possibly win in Charlotte Flair. For me, Rumbles are more exciting when there are multiple people who could possibly walk out the victor. After seemingly months and months of build, Naomi and Mandy Rose finally clashed in the ring, and it only went a couple of minutes the majority of which were an ad break. Sonya caused the distraction, allowing Mandy to pick up the win. I guess this feud must continue. As it to mirror the previous outing, Sheamus interfered in Cesaro's match with The Miz to allow the Swiss Superman to pick up the win. Shane McMahon tried to attack the bar after the match, but got laid out by a brutal looking bro kick right to the face. They then put Miz and Shane through the announcer's table to leave the tag title challengers laying. This was another solid angle to build a match this coming Sunday. Vince McMahon came out to moderate a face-to-face -face between AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, but the WWE Champion, who continues to be my style icon, didn't want to get in the ring with such a dangerous man. He instead cut several amazing promos on the outside, first attacking AJ, saying the future of the WWE will be terrible with him as champion, as Bryan is doing this for the greater good. The greater good. Shut it! And telling everyone that Bryan isn't the people's champion, he's the planet's champion. He then targeted Vince, who kept telling him to get in the ring, by pointing out he's part of the baby boomer generation that has put the planet in the state it's currently in. Where is the lie? Brian was so good in this segment, but AJ also had a good line of his own, pointing out that Brian took the same plane he did to get to this town, which has a huge carbon footprint, and that makes Daniel Bryan fickle. Eventually, AJ left the ring to attack Brian, who then used as a human shield against the phenomenal forearm, taking out AJ with the running knee. While not as hot as previous angles between the two, this was was, yet again, more solid build to Sunday's Rumble. And it wasn't just Daniel Bryan killing it in the promo game either, as earlier in the show we got a tremendous one from Mustafa Ali about Samoa Joe attacking him last week. This felt real, raw, and genuine, and because of the way it was shot, it was so much more effective than if he had just said the exact same words with Kayla Braxton backstage. He was then beaten by Samoa Joe in a short but decent match, which really put Joe over as a serious contender for the Rumble. New Day cut a promo backstage with Kayla about having a strategy to win the Rumble, the highlight of which was the random cameo by former SmackDown ring announcer Tony Chimmel. And in the main event, Rey Mysterio and Andrade had a rematch from last week, this time a two out of three falls match with Zelina Vega banned from ringside. As you would imagine, this was just as good, if not better than their encounter last week, with Andrade picking up the first fall with a top rope sit out powerbomb. The sight of Andrade stepping up from the second to the top rope with Rey in a powerbomb position was in Incredible. Bray picked up the second fall by reversing another powerbomb attempt into a Canadian destroyer, and the two traded big moves for the decider. There was sadly a botched spot with a crucifix powerbomb attempt, but they recovered quickly and it never killed the crowd's interest. And then, like a complete dick, Samoa Joe ran out of nowhere to attack Ray and cause the DQ. He also left Andrade laying and put out Ray with a choke to stand tall, announcing himself as the man who will win the Rumble. This was really, really effective. This whole episode of SmackDown live seemingly was designed to put Joe over strong at every possible turn, to make him look like a real possible winner for the match on Sunday, and then he was laid out by a returning Randy Orson with an RKO, who played up to the crowd like he's a babyface. Well, that was a shame. This was another really enjoyable episode of SmackDown Live, which not only did a good job of building the Royal Rumble undercard matches, but also the Rumble itself.
Well, the men's rumble anyway. The commentators put over that Orton could win his third rumble. Mustafa Ali will be looking for his revenge, as will Ray and Andrade. There's a lot of plates spinning heading into that match. The same cannot be said for the women's rumble, however, which is only being built around Flair as a serious contender on the SmackDown side, though there will be a spot for Naomi and Rose. This week's SmackDown Live is another high smacktastic. Ali and Laurie had some thoughts on Monday's Raw and whether Finn Balor could win the big one this coming Sunday. Click the video on screen right now to check that out and become one of our pledge hammers to hear our in-depth review of Royal Rumble 2000 by clicking the link to Patreon. I've been Luke Owen and that was wrestling.